Okay, welcome to our THT. We are going to go hunting for power play setups. Before we get started, I have to mention that this is a Traders Helping Traders webinar and it's meant as a help in training, not in substitute of training. And with the with trading comes risk and please see the complete risk disclosures on apexinvesting.net. You could lose more than you invest. Okay, now with that, we're going to get started. You were looking at Ivar's charts. He has been so awesome to initiate this little get together. And he's got some other friends of his on Skype. So you're going to hear some people in the background and comments, and we encourage everyone to comment. We want to know um, what you're seeing, what you think, what all this stuff. So don't be shy. Okay, let's get started. We're, we're, we picked a random day, and we went to open. So we're right at open on a random day, and here we go. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, yeah, start. One, two, cool. three, go. Oh, Jesus, it's going to be fun. Okay, we're in an overall <laughs> downtrend, am I right? Mm -hmm. Overall down, am I right? Oh, geez. That was a yes. really bad echo. I guess I better oh, mute my audio on this thing. My audio on I had like a triple echo, but I had, I figured that out. Well, I hear an echo. I don't want well, the hear an to hear an echo. This would be horrible. Be All good. All good. Yeah, but you're not recording, Lou. So if I hear an echo, you're going to hear it in the recording. You don't want to hear my voice twice. Thank you very much. You. <laughs> I'm not finding where to turn it off. I'm where to mute the room, though. Turn it off. I'm where to mute the room, though. <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can open the mixer. See if I can open the mixer. What do you guys see on this? Price went further with less bad volume. Yes, sir, yeah. it did. I agree. Um, I don't see a key level, though. We do have, we do have the cluster, though. Hey, you guys are going to have to speak really loud and clear so that everybody can hear you. Loud and clear so that everybody can hear you. Because I don't want to talk any more than I have to with the echo. I don't want to talk any more than I have to with the echo. Yeah, you're fine. Just to make sure everybody can hear us. So, because I had a bad echo, so I exited the, uh, um, we got a room. question in the room about your clusters. What color? Green, correct? The clusters are green, correct. So right now, OP is just set up for... Uh, the power place, so we need the the clusters on them. But you don't have the clusters on your C chart. You only have it on, on the OP, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't really like them on my C chart. Well, that's just because you're odd. I've heard that. I've heard that. No, he, that's what we were just talking about. He does not have clusters no. on his C chart. He does not have clusters on his C chart. <laughs> I 
I'm trying to mute this so I don't have an echo. So it went about six ticks higher. Um, what seems to be less volume. Or about the same, actually. asking what the third chart is. What's the third chart? It's a 10 minute chart. I use it to um, draw my magnets. High volume magnets. And the reason I have it there is because when you have volume exceeding expectations, if it gets above the threshold of 10,000 just on NQ, um, I will plot the magnet as soon as that 10 minute bar is done. Okay. So I'll plot, I'll plot the magnets in intercession. I find that really helps me. So what setups are we looking for right now? What's our market? I want you guys to, to tell me. So, it looked, it looked like a type 1 had developed, but it broke the high by, what, 6 ticks, about? And it has about the same volume, so, let me see. Yeah, visibly, I can't see it had less volume, so, no key level, you got your cluster, but I'm, I'm going to pass on that one. Doing only power plays, correct? Yeah, I think power So do you guys still think we're in a, a downtrend? Um, our lows are no longer low, yet it seems to me we're kind of in top. Mm -hmm. So this created a certain amount of volume. This came down with more volume and this closed up. more volume it's mm -hmm. more bad wait a minute the downtrend is more bad volume going down but it couldn't quite it almost it couldn't quite reach this uh, swing point well, now it's closing down, so. I mean to me it looks like a power play number two it's hard to tell exactly. because it's kind of little exactly that's what I was getting at it looks like a power play number two All right you would have had an entry up here, except it was kind of an iffy one. I mean, there's no there's no cluster. For a power play number one and two, you've got to have a cluster. We don't have one. Do you see one? I don't see one. Yeah, there's a cluster right here. Oh, yeah, the green. Do we Sorry. have a level? The colors are different. <laughs> it's hard to get used to your colors. Okay. <laughs> Would it be too far away from settlement to be a level? Where is I don't really, I don't really see a key level unless you count the middle of the uh, expected range boxes, you know? Here's the low of the day. Mm -hmm. 
approaching mm-hmm. a little today. Looks like we got some pretty chop here. Not pretty, some chop. down a little further on less volume, right? Mm-hmm. Right, I see that. <clears throat> right at a, a magnet. So, so would we be watching to go long if we, we have a, we have a, right here we have a, a, a cluster, so would we be looking to go long here pretty soon because we went a little further? Unless bad. Unless bad. Mm-hmm. But what I'm going to do is draw a, a chop box. I would put an entry there myself. Uh huh. Power play number one. Ivar, you're sleeping. Yeah, wake up. Well, I mean, the thing is that you're, I mean, it's, it's, a, one, it's a one bar flip, and we don't, we don't do those. It's, That's why I'm it's drawing the, still the ch- less than the last time, and it went further. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it, so we're comparing one a, a one bar flip as a retrace. Yeah, when you've got small bars like that, yeah, kind of. That's where I'm iffy on it. That's why I didn't do anything. Uh, that's good. That's good. So if I would wait, it's it's if you're in, if you don't know, don't. If you're in doubt, don't. So let's go. We got a third bar sling coming, and we are got equal volume on both sides here. The top box is all the way up. The top box is all the way up. Just, just in case, like I, I get a third bar sling from it. I don't see enough there to make me comfortable with anything yet. Yeah, exactly. That's why it would be more, more of a scalp. And this bar, we're having a cluster. Uh huh. So that's one thing we've got. We have two clusters in the area, so... Yeah, and we've got chop, so that's pretty... But you're above the chop box if you would go long. What, I don't know what gives you the indication that you might want to go long on this. Just in case there's a sling, but... If it's just a power play, then no, it's not, not an entry. Evar, I think you made the right decision not to get in while I go long. Yeah, the one bar flip, was, I didn't. I, was Lori wrong on this one? <laughs> <laughs> Are you implying that I'm not wrong most of the time, or I think I'm not? It's all. I You're like, I'm is not. that a compliment or not? <laughs> He's gonna dog that's on fine. me whenever he can, so that's <laughs> good. That's fine. So here it went up on about the same amount of VAD as it was trying to break out of the chop box, and it didn't. And here, there's more of that than the previous one. This one I like so. if it closes up. I actually like this. You've got, you've got a visibly more VAD volume going down now. If it can't touch this line, if it can't touch the chop box, and it closes up, I like that for an up trade. Mm-hmm. I like for an up trade. So your your entry would be set uh, one tick above the chop box. My entry would 
B set one. Yeah, take about the top box would be good. Yeah. No, it needs to go further. I think it needs to go further on less on more bad. No. The more, the more, the more this chops, the more this chops, and the more volume it accumulates in between, and it closes up. That that's a good setup to to go long. You got more VAD that could not quite go as far. There you go. We, there's our entry. There's our entry. You are sleeping, buddy. Sleeping, buddy. It moved up faster than I thought it would. Now let's see if there's a retrace. I not put your you're still below a little bit below the tallest bar there. You have an elevator that I bring it up a tick above that. Yeah, it might touch, it might come back and try to touch that. That's the only chance you have of entering. Okay. So would your second entry be the break of the swing? You could do that too, yes. This is more of a touchback, or you could do the, whoa. There you go. Oh my gosh. I can't see it on my LP chart, so I kind of. Okay, we have another cluster. Okay, this bar is giving me a cluster. Ivar, you don't have your bar range indicator on here? It's right, yeah, it's right here. There it is, okay. There it is, okay. So you've got it so where if it goes short, you're out. Yeah, if it moves, if it moves back into the chop box, I'm I'm pretty much out. Okay. Plus minus a few ticks. Okay. So, but uh, I wanted to touch back into the touch the back the the chop box and I've gotten a little bit of a better entry, but a little bit of a better. You know, if your chop box isn't quite right. Your chop box is a couple ticks low. It really should be at the height. Of where your entry is. Just of this bar right here? Yes, that's your chop. So box. it's not okay. So, but in oh. hindsight, this is this is where I drew the chop box because this is what formed first. So I drew it here. I drew it here after this bar closed up. Doesn't matter. So when I, the I, next one comes up, it formed more chops. So. So you're saying I would adjust it to yes. up here after this bar, yes. try to break it. Yes. Okay. So why the entry, Dennis asked. Uh, Ivar, explain that, please. Why what? Why did you enter there? So VAD um, came came down and price came back up. And when it tried to break the previous chop box that we made, um, it tried to do it on the same amount of volume. So that is the, called the fake break. And then you have this bar that closed down with bigger VAD than the previous one, and it couldn't uh, break the, the low of the chop box. So when this bar closed up, um, I missed the, the, the entry like right away, but oftentimes you will see a retrace back into the chop box, and that is um, most of the time... Uh, Traders coming back to get the break-even stops, and you can get in on the retrace. So that's why my my entry is is right here. So he actually got yes. in on a touchback. He got in on a touchback. But it was after a power play entry was valid. He was missing. Well, a touchback. I would have put my. Um, entry after the bar was already in here. So I would put it in here, and when it came back up, it would pick me up. But, yes, yeah, very very close to it. Yeah. 
So he, he would have entered would have along entered. after the last reversal bar, after it could reach the swing level with more bad. Yes. It couldn't reach it. Yes, after it could not reach, it came down the second time. It could not reach it with more VAD. It couldn't reach the bottom of the chop box with more VAD. That would be power play number two. And so he put his entry at the a tick above the chop box. And he just, what'd you get? You got knocked out of one, or did you? You took profit, it looks like. You have an auto take profit. And you just took profit yeah. of 10 ticks. And your entry got moved up to break even plus a tick. Is, is that right? Moved up plus a tick. Is that Correct. Right? Okay, so now we took profit on the... Well, he protected 10 ticks of the scalp entry. And that, that hit him at 10 ticks. So that one's out. And then the his ATM automatically protects 10 when he hits 12. And then um, the, when that happens, the other entry is brought up to break even, plus a tick. So that's where we are right now. So he's got 10 ticks already banked on this trade. Right. So the, the name of the game is uh, protection of your capital. Mm -hmm. So as soon as price moves 12 ticks into the money from your entry, you move your stop up to pretend, uh, protect 10 ticks and your other one to break even. Right. So we're up to settlement. Do we want to do any protecting over here? What do you want to do? I mean, what are you? You're up to settlement. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Um, I would ideally protect below the mini magnet, but I don't see anything on OP. I'll protect. Right here. So what are you protecting about 10? Protecting... No, 10's more up here. I actually think that's a little too tight, but... I mean, it's settlement you're coming on, so I don't know... Right. What you're thinking. I'm waiting, I'm waiting to see what happens when it reaches, once it reaches settlement. Because I'm expecting a bounce or chop off of settlement, so. Right, I would right. tend to think so. You just had another. Oh no, that was our original cluster that we had. Okay. No. And you have a mini magnet. Oh, interesting. And you have a mini. Mhm. Mm and because it has that mini magnet, I I want to give it more room. The second is above break even. Now he's protecting a few ticks there. A few ticks there. This is good. You get a you get to actually see what I was talking about in action here. Now, right above settlement, there is a high volume magnet too. So, probably gonna get some chop around here. Whether or not it's gonna go directly to it, we don't know. But that is a pretty big high volume high volume magnet. You, I would tend to think it's likely to go up and hit it at some point if you give it room. Mhm. Mm uh, well, now that I see this wick here, I think it's probably smart to just leave it right here. Okay. Um, trade said you're at 20 ticks. When do you start protecting that 20 ticks? He is, he trades a little different than I do. He gives himself more room. He protects less. He already has his 10 ticks on his scalp, so he can't, he can't come off bad. So he's, he tends to give it more room, and so that's what he's doing. And he's just going to let it go and see what it's going to chop around settlement, giving it room around settlement to chop. I would have to be shoving it up under 20 probably, but... That's <laughs> <me>. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's why it's good to see some other people and what they do. Other people and what they do. Looking to purple. So, if you if you look over here on the ice uh, histogram, you have right where my stop is. You have a huge drop off in volume. So this is the beginning of like a low volume zone. So I don't expect it to come back into here. And it's wick actually couldn't break into the low volume zone. So that's another reason I put it there. Okay. And then uh, put your cursor on here. I will do it also here. Yeah. Here is the high volume node that he's thinking it's going to go to. He wants to give it room to get up to this high volume node. And then what, if it does hit there, well, there's another one up here that it's, there's a really pretty decent chance it could get there. So this is where I have trouble sitting through. He's much better at that than me. Much better at that. So I move my stop up to this little node right here that you see. This little node right here that you see. And I'm going to move it up again to underneath this node. Okay, so you're really tight now. Yeah. It's really tight because it's now at settlement and it's now touched a volume node. So I'm expecting chop. I'm expecting it to move around. So that's why it's, it's so tight. But at first I wanted to breathe. Okay. That would be a one and done. That would be a one and done. Yeah. If you shoved it up under there now, you got 40. Wow. Let's nice. see. I'm going to protect a few more ticks. So here I have this high volume node. You can see it stretches all the way out here. And we'll see if price is going to bounce from that. And I'm going to set my stop right here, right in this little hole that you see right here. Okay. Because it just hit this big one. So, so you are just going to shove it right up there. You're going to let it play. Okay. It may head to the high of what? I, I can't tell your dots. Is that the high of? Today, this is today. this is the high of today, yeah, and this is ice high and the control. But I am expecting some chop in here, so I'm gonna well, keep it tight. Did it? I mean, is you think there's still gonna be chop after settlement? It went through pretty clean, but there's a lot it of went times a touchback to settlement. A lot of times you'll get a touchback to settlement. Yeah, exactly, and it could come back and touch this this magnet as well, so. We'll see. We got we got momentum stars, so we'll see what happens. This will really be interesting to see how this ends up recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No guarantees on this one. Okay. So the people that are seeing this live, then if it doesn't record, they, they got to see something that no one else did. <laughs> Dennis, the bird said like that. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to move it down to here, but once I move my stop, I don't want to move it again because that uh, encourages bad habits. <laughs> yeah, it's better to stick yeah. by your convictions. Mm -hmm. So. See, look, look, look at where this wick is. It's in this hole right here, and this is the open price. So. We'll see if it can break through. There's 
orders up here, so. <clears throat> so they're close to 40 ticks there. Mm-hmm. And you already have... Guys, stop. You already have... <laughs> You already have ten banked, so you're in the bank, so you're So if you shove that stop up, you're talking fifty ticks. Mm -hmm. About. Yeah. All right. There you go. And that's it. Nice job, Evil. One and done. You've just saw a one and done. You just saw a one and done. Cool, cool. That was a good trade. Good job, guys. That was a good trade. Okay, so now what we're looking for is hidden divergence, right? Because it's obviously going up. Going up, mm -hmm. correct? So mm -hmm. we're looking for hidden divergence. Right. And, you know, will we have some? Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, I'd be looking for a retrace with chop uh, chop within the bar to settlement and that will most likely give us a bigger count for bad team down and a hidden uh, divergence entry off settlement is doesn't get much sweeter than that so we'll see what's up If this one ends up going down and bounces off settlement, that'll give us our first retrace that we can compare another one to if it should go, if it should keep going. Okay, so we're not, we're not comparing it to this over here. Uh, I guess technically you could compare it to the, um, that sling that came down and could not quite reach the chop box. Because mm -hmm. it is, it, it is, um, that one, it's just an elevator and a sling that's almost two bars. Mm -hmm. That's really about where your, uh, trend started. Uh, trend started. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. But, you see how... You're at the high volume magnet, you're at settlement, and you're getting your retrace down back to settlement. And you've got a, a cluster forming on this bar. Right. Oh, yeah, take it. Take what, Gary? Take the retrace back up with the cluster. Well, you could technically take the if it if it forms a sling or an elevator. Since you mm -hmm. have a power play at the bottom, you could take this up after okay. it goes back up, and you know it would right. be a re-entry. Would you take a touchback to get a better entry with smaller risk at settlement? Um, uh, yeah. this is a toughie at settlement because right here it could chop for an hour. For sure. For me, I couldn't do it because I I can't sit through that. I can't. You can sit through stuff all day long. You probably could. But I can't sit through that. So no, I would tend to. It might have hit its top and gotten down now. I I wouldn't. It's too much risk for me for a touchback. Okay. Now if it hits that power line, well, no, it's settlement there, no. Settlement there, no. Do 
you guys hear a beeping sound? I do. I don't know what the beeping yes. sound is. Mm. Ivar's, Ivar's on a heart monitor. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty calm that's, when he's not in a trade. That's how, you know, that's how you know I'm cool, calm, and collected. The P bar with a cluster did form right off that high volume node on the histogram. Yes, it did. So you're looking to get you're gonna you're gonna do it. You're gonna get back in if it comes up there. Okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of room from. Um, my entry to the POC and to, um, excuse me, to blue ice and to um, green ice. Agreed. I think that's a, a wise choice because you've got one volume node right here and you're going to, your chances of going to the next one are pretty good. You've had a cluster, you've got a level, you've got everything in place. If it's going to drop, you won't get in. If it's going to drop, you won't get in. I don't know what happened, but the sound is totally messed up. Yeah, mm -hmm. the sound is strange. Yeah. One other point of interest is that if it breaks the high of your P, your apex is going to flip to green. That's very true. It will. It'll be the reversal apex. Is he entering one, two, or three ticks above the elevator? I think I think that's one. Um, I will check though. Yeah, it's one. Yeah. My eyes aren't so good. Getting old. Yeah. <laughs> when I get done with you, you're gonna feel real old. <laughs> that's a promise. <laughs> well, I should have made a comment on that. <laughs> Don't. About Lori, but never mind. That is a pretty cool automated ATM that will move it up to 10 ticks and then move it up to break even to protect 10 ticks and then that is awesome. That is awesome. I'm going to protect a little bit more right here at this. Uh, I'm going to do it actually below the node. A little bit below the node. Right where you see um, you know, you see the cloud push out all the way over here. There's a lot of volume here. Price is attracted to that. And then you have this node, uh, noticeable node where there isn't volume. So I'm protecting one tick below that. All right. Now I'm going to protect little bit below blue ice. Yeah,
you guys hear that? What? You that? Okay, good. You didn't hear it. My stomach just gave this rumble that... <laughs> Man. Alright. I like, I like, I like. So, I'm going to move this up here. Right at the top of this right here. Expecting a retrace. And there you go. There's another trade. An elevator scalp turned into a little bit bigger. You give yourself the you give the market the opportunity to give you more when you trail your scalp and when you um you know trail your, your trend trade. Cool. That's another. Oh, 10 on the scalp and about 13, I would say, on the trend. So another 25, so you're up to what, 50, 60, 73 ish? Um, first one was 20, 10, 30. Yeah, about 70. Yeah. So you could call it a day. For sure. Not bad for an hour and two minutes of trading. Not bad at all. I mean, once you got going, you could verify it truly was a power play setup, and so then um, extra entries are valid. The the elevators, the slings, that kind of stuff. If you missed it. And that's how it's done. Now trade my account for one hour, Dennis said. <laughs> that's perfect. One hour for the THT, that's that's really spot on. Unless you want to keep it going. That's cool too. Uh, what, we're at what time? No, we're only at 43 minutes. It's because we took a half hour to get everything figured out. <laughs> I do it over that time because the thing was not, the cameras were not going on for me. All right. Can you explain how you drew your chop box, Ivar? Sure. So this is, I, I, I changed it after this bar closed. But initially, if we're going to start over here, I'll actually delete it and I'll show you. So here I had a bar that closed up, another bar that closed down, and then another bar that closed down. Now, if this keeps going, right, there's no chop box. But I had this bar come down, price come down to this uh, magnet, and this bar closed up. So what I did is I got the high of this bar right here after, after this bar closed up. So I got the high of this bar. And I got the low of this bar, which is right at the magnet, and I extend it out. So that way when price came up here and it tried to break this, this little chop box, it failed. And it went down. Now, because it did break it by a little bit, what I do is I move it to the high of that bar. So... That is that, that is the, the the new chop box, and like I said, you had price, um, you had VAD that tried to break uh, the box. Excuse me, price tried to break the box, and um, it couldn't do it. So price went up. I didn't get it on the entry right away as it went up, but look how it went back into the chop box and failed, which is right at this high. And that was where my entry was, right here. So it was a number two power play with a not quite as far with more VAD, a cluster, and a and level was pretty iffy. Pretty iffy. What? A level. 
Right. I don't see um, good level there, but I had the half deviation from the previous day right, running through the middle of that, and settlement was pretty close, and the low of the day. So you've got some important levels there to push around from. Right. So, right, so you have the low of the day that's maybe, what, four or five ticks away? And you also have this high volume node right here to the tick, and it closed up. So that for me was an indication um, that it is it is a very it is a valid level trade off of. So, question, guys, would you take this elevator here? Ooh. No. How many ticks have you had? Uh, I would tend to not. I'm not gonna. Oh no 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 no! I'm done. I'm done trading. I more than grateful for the ticks, but would you guys take this elevator right here, just in terms of where price is, the setup, and and the what we have around it? No. No, you Why not? had a good move. That's not a good. Because um, the yeah. Uh, John asks why you did not take the first entry when it broke the first bo chop box initially. Do you mean the one where he moved the box to the top of that, um, John? The VAD was, um, yes. Okay. The VAD was, yes. It actually oh. went a little further on for, further volume. He, actually, honestly, I don't think he was paying attention at that point. Because he even missed the breakout of the chop box. And he had to wait and get it on the touchback. So I think he just wasn't kind of paying attention, honestly. Are you, are you talking about this first break? No, the 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 elevator bar that actually broke out of your original chop box. That one where you're both oh, no, that one right there. Oh, that one. because that oh. I didn't see more more volume on that. That the bad was pretty sick. You had a little more than the time before, but. Um, not yeah. noticeably more. I mean, if we stretch yeah, it, it was, out, it was pretty. Yeah, it was pretty iffy. We stretch it out, even when it's really stretched out, it's a little hard to see. So, I and couldn't. Yeah, I was looking at the red going down. Duh. What a, okay. Yeah. I've been. I just. I need a nap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at the at the uh, blue going up, you did not have more volume, and therefore not a good thing. Right. These two bars did not have more volume than, than this bar in the chop box. So, And right now you don't have hidden di uh, divergence. Oh, yeah. What are we, look we need to be looking for hidden divergence. That tells you if you want to take that elevator or not. <clears throat> you don't have it. And you don't have it. Correct. Mm -hmm. We did on the last one, which is a good reason why he would take it. We had a stronger VAD on the retrace than the previous one. We don't have it now, so it's not something we'd want to take. The only reason I wouldn't want to take this elevator is because you're taking it into the high of the day. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just, that's just me. But... Price did come down and barely touch green ice and shot back up. So you don't have divergence. You don't have hidden divergence. So on a very obvious straight trend up, if you don't have hidden divergence, it's not a mm -hmm. good idea to take that elevator. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? That we now have guidance on which which elevators are more likely to work. Which elevators are
exactly, Dennis. One touched back to, a uh, both touched back to important levels. One had hidden divergence. So it turns out this one would have worked just fine. We left a lot of ticks on the table, but hey, he's had a good day. Hey, had a good day. play and one side up off the power play too and that's it so what's really cool about the power plays is that something I really like um, if you're like me and you see trades everywhere that <laughs> probably aren't really there <laughs> um, your imaginary trades exactly um, it allows you to focus on the quality of the trade not necessarily the quantity, not necessarily how many trades you take, but taking good quality trades. That's why it's called one and done and not 100 and done. I got a good, uh, Lou says he has too many imaginary trades. I have a really good uh, fix for that, and I hold the remote. Shock power. <laughs> I feel you, Lou. I'm in the same boat with you, man. It's, it's, it's tough, but focusing on the power plays will really help you with that, because if it's not a valid setup you don't take it and if you don't like the setup if you feel even a little bit iffy about it you don't take it so that'll limit the number of trades and increase the quality of your trades and if you take quality trades you know, money will follow because you're, you're looking to trade well no we're coming home are we going to have an elevator and go up further? Are we going to reverse? What's going on? Um, Watch for hidden divergence here. I believe it's out of steam for now. Is that a magnet? So. I've been we'll just watching NQ lately, John. John asks how many markets... You or I monitor in a day. I've only been watching NQ. I, I've only been watching NQ too. Ivar has one more trade he can take today. On this day. Because we're limiting our trades to just three trades a day, aren't we? Yeah, we are. If you limit your trades, in all seriousness, it really helps you take only the best. And I would highly recommend it for you people that find yourselves over trading. Just so you sit down in the morning, tell yourself, you know, I am not going to trade more than three trades today. And when I'm done with my three, I'm done. You will find yourself waiting and taking the best setups and let leave the rest alone. Let leave the rest alone. Okay, that really helped me, Laurie, because I tended to take like five or six, as you know, mm -hmm. and then one morning I got up um, and then I thought, oh my God, what if I take five or six 
and Laurie comes up to me and say, okay, show me your chart of the whole day and put your markers on. And I was like, okay, not going to happen. So, yeah, that helped me. It, it really did. So I, I noticed that I really tried to pick good ones and not more than three. It, it, it really helps. It, it really helps. you didn't tell me you had an owl. <laughs> That's not me. Somebody's got some electronics too close to their computer or their speakers. That's what that is. Mm. Ah, somebody moved it. Yay. Exactly. I was about to say that. Thank you, whoever did that. We're good. I thought we was in a jungle. Well, we kind of are, although my birds are pretty quiet. I am, anyway. I don't know about you guys, but... Yeah, anyway, I don't know about you. Okay, are we reversing now? We've got the biggest um, pullback that we've had. Mm-hmm. And it's increased We're back. Still so if this goes back and closes up, would it be a reverse or a, would it be a hidden divergence we want to take? That's a pretty long run. Wouldn't you be a little skeptical? I would be, yeah, absolutely. That's why I, I finish when I finish and I'm done. I finish when I finish when I'm done. Now, Lori, are you saying I have to take one more trade or no, I can take one more you trade? You can take one more trade. Mm. Okay. Gotcha. You can. I mean, I would be very hesitant because you've already had a really nice move. Mm -hmm. So. And, and the thing is that. You could have hidden divergence and it could go up more, but you're having, um, if, if this closes up and breaks this by a few ticks, this is a strong magnet, right? It breaks this by a few ticks, you're going to end up getting stopped out on, you know, what would be uh, price making a little bit of a higher high with less VAD. And then that would make for a nice reversal if we have, depending on what the VAD's going to look like. I mm -hmm. agree. I, I would not be myself I looking agree. to take after I that agree. big of a, especially a straight move. That, big I mean, that, that would make me very nervous. Yeah. That, that's no why when, I, when sure. I get my one and done, I'm truly done. Unless later on I see something once in a while, I might take something if I see it really good, but I'm not watching. I stop watching. That's when I just answer questions and do other stuff. I don't even watch it. I, I don't want myself tempted. I don't want myself tempted. And I want to take a minute to say thank you to Ivar to, uh, for um, suggesting this. I mean, yeah, I opened my mouth and said, hey, let's do it in the elite room. But this was his idea. Elite room. But this was his idea. For sure. It's awesome to collaborate with, with everyone. I feel like we can all learn so much more. Um, when we all when we all work together, you know, I was Absolutely. I was trading by myself on an island for a long time, and <laughs> it's not the way to go. It's it's a lot better when you have, you know, other people around you with the same goals, learning the same thing. So I'm gonna continue to to do these for sure, even though you guys don't like my colors, which I'm a little hurt about. We're getting used to it. It's easy on the eyes. <laughs> oh my god! Like a thunderstorm to me. Yeah, right. I the the white the the white background is is too bright for me. 
So I I tone it down quite a bit. There you go. Karen loves your colors. Sweet. volume completely died down. So I think the uptrend is done. Well, it's still above expected. It's still what? It's still more than expected. Right, but there was a huge drop is what I'm saying. Right, there was a huge drop. Now this that happened on these bars. Now it happened on this bar and this bar. So, yeah. So now maybe we're getting our chop at the top. Mm -hmm. And will we get a chance to go back down? See. Now let's say this bar, uh, let's say price goes up and creates a, a higher high at the low of the day at the magnet with less bad volume. Even if we have a cluster, it's not a, a type 1 entry, right? Because we can't compare this retrace to this. Right. If it would retrace, if it would go back up, well, right. Because by the time it goes back up more than just this next one or maybe a third one, that is a pretty big run to compare it to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you could take a scowl, but it's not the ideal setup. Right. Gotcha. What I would tend to do is if it exceeds then when it comes if it if it exceeds a little bit and it's a bit like right now if you look at that vad there's a big big difference and sure. you know of course there's a big difference because there's you know a lot of bars versus a little but i might tend to take one right at that magnet level on its way back down with like a two or three tick stop if i've had a cluster which you did at the beginning of that chop. Right. It's not an exact power play entry, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pass on that. Good idea. Somebody's got something kind of close to a speaker. Uh, it stopped. <laughs> so there's your higher high with um, less bad volume. Now, let's see what happens. Because, because what you have up here at this high is you have breakout traders. You see, in, the, in these few ticks that Price moved up. It was over 200 contracts to the buy side in net volume. So you have breakout traders up there for sure. <coughs> this bar closed with um, positive three contracts in net volume, but most of the bar um, it had negative net volume. <coughs> and you're right. You don't have similar legs to compare to, so that's why we're not. We're not anxious to use this as a power play and get in because you're not comparing anything very close.
and that's where I, I messed up many, many, many times. <laughs> See that, um, that it went a little bit above the high of the day um, in that area to, to engage those breakout traders. Yeah, to engage those and now it's grabbing their stops. So for the first half of that, you kind of cut out, Lori. I couldn't hear you. Yeah, we got some horrible interference here. Um, it went up a little bit higher as kind of a fake break, and now it's going down and taking out stops. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if you're watching OP, right when it broke the high, there was a lot of buy contracts right here. So those are the breakout traders, and now you have price reversing. And Yeah, and you've got a divergent bar. <clears throat> exactly. It was a divergent bar, and now look at that. Yeah. It closed with negative. Uh, so now you could definitely. draw a chop box and... Um, and, and and watch for a breakout if you so chose for a breakout uh, sure that you Don't ask me why I made it so big on the other side. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you've got um, less VAD going down. VAD going down. Mm -hmm. So your chances of a breakout with heart, <laughs> with any power, are not real good right now. Mm -hmm. Not real good. Not to the downside, at least. Right. Not to the downside. Right. I mean, so far, the VAD says, I I I'm not going to break out there. I don't have any power to break the walls. Right. It could chop there for 20 minutes and build some, and by the time it gets back down there, maybe it'll break out. Or it could go back up to the top and build that way, so. If I am going to take a move to the upside, though, I would want volume to be exceeding because I am at the top of an expected range box. Oh, yeah. And I don't expect it to break out unless there is exceeding volume. Yeah. Agreed. Do we know where the one deviation is? Where the one deviation is? The one deviation level? Yeah. Oh, it's up right there. Up there. Okay. The ways. We're not even okay. at point five yet. Okay. Okay, this is where I just lose patience. I can never trade past this point. The fact that it broke the high by a few ticks 
came down and is now stuck makes me think that it went up to catch the breakout traders and down and hit their stops and now we have to see what's going to happen yep yep i agreed we got our fake break so chances are when it decides to move it might be a nice move The longer that this chops around, the more uh, more confident I'm going to be on an entry in, in either direction. This is true. Because you got because lots I, of chops. Because I know that there's volume building. Yeah. Okay. to move their electronics away from a speaker or microphone. Mm. That's really weird. Yeah, it's somebody on the Skype call. We're actually sharing screens through Skype, so it's it's definitely somebody on the Skype call, Aaron. Do we have direction bias yet or just waiting? Just waiting. Um uh oh, here Just waiting. <laughs> Just waiting. <clears throat> it's like the bar's trying to push down, but there's more buyers in that bar. Yep, it's divergent at this point. Mm hmm. Divergent at this point. Hey, do you know if there's a uh, setting for VAD to to paint, you know, intra bar? No, there isn't. No, there because you don't know what direction it's going to be until you don't know if it should be added to the previous trend or start a new one until the bar closes. Right, right. That so makes sense. Can't I, I got intra bar. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So, as of now, I'm more cell biased. See what happens. If you had, well, if you had IR up, it would have you at the top of the outer line, so I would tend to be cell biased myself because of that, but... Um, I have to learn how to use that still. <laughs> Main reason I'm cell biased is because as I see the bar ticking up and down, I see buyers coming in and not being able really to move price at the edge of the expected range box, and there's no volume. So, there's no volume. What do you guys think? Dennis says short. Dennis says short. Okay, how about uh, you that are on the Skype with me? What do you guys think? I think you ought to take your money and go to the bank. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> the VAD does not say we're breaking out yet. No. But it's chopped around enough, so. see exactly where I'm at. Mm. Open your chart trader. And turn on the thing that says um, show profit loss in between trades. Do your um, um, chart trader properties, I think it is. Go down to the bottom. Show PL when flat. True. There you go. How easy was that? Cool. And how would I change that? Oh, wait, wait, there might be a setting in here to change it to points. Let's see, well, wait, have, no, it's... We have a change to points on your actual trades. I think it shows dollars in between when you're flat. Maybe it can do something else, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I have okay. mine showing points. The number. I have mine showing points when it's in a trade, so that you don't panic when you see dollars, and it shows dollars when you're flat because you're flat. Who cares? Oh, okay. okay. So three hundred seventy. My. That's seventy-four ticks. That's seventy-four ticks. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, the uh, power play and sharpshooter charts are going to be put back up. So, just a warning, they could pop up in front of us. Jiminy Christmas, this is taking a long time. The price is moving down even though the, 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 the bar is still divergent. That's interesting. Yeah, you can't tell anything far as direction on that. Not not until this bar closes. Not, not until this bar closes. Not, not. How do I take the uh, the confirmation off of when I'm placing an order? when I always have to fight through my way to figure it out. I think you have to, to go to um, to your tools and then options. Hold on. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay. See, this is how I learned to trade, right in front of everybody, and then everybody, somebody knows everything. Not one person knows it all, but somebody knows the answer to all your questions. It was great. Okay, VAD's increasing. Look at that. Are we going to get in here or no? Oh, you did. Okay. And you're going to let it retrace. So you're hoping that it comes back to get you, right? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. You're just so nonchalant. Yeah, if it comes back, it comes back. Well, you really can be because you had such a good morning, but. Yeah, we'll see if it comes back. <laughs> I usually have it waiting for me when it comes out of the box. Right. Yeah, it is. Oh, look at that. Did we have a, we haven't had a, a cluster since it went into CHOP. So I'm not loving that part. Mm. The cluster's up here, though. Yeah, I see it. You're talking yeah. about this bar that CHOP's right here? Yeah, since we went into CHOP, we haven't had a cluster after that. I mean, just that initial one telling us we were going into CHOP. Now uh -huh. we don't have one telling us we're coming out. Or telling us we're coming out. Gotcha. I see your point. But then it hasn't got you yet either, so. Mm -hmm. Dang, it went close, didn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you uh, call a tick from close. Okay. Oh, that is some awful noise there. 
Awful noise there. Where do you set your first stop, Ivar? My first stop? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you say 15? I I set them, yeah, they set automatically, 15 and 17. And then he moves them to where they need to be for any given trade. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So when they when they uh, populate, I'll. Uh, I mean, I don't want to put it too tight because I want to give it a little bit of room. But uh, it looks like it's not pick me up. But um, I'll put one. I'll put them at the top of the uh, expected range box. That's about what mine are, Dennis. It's that's all that is is that all that 15 and 17 are is just an initial spot for your ATM to place them. And for exactly. each trade, you move them to suit the correct placement depending on what your trade is. For an example, if you did a, a sling, that's going to be a different. You're going to move them to a different place than if you did a touchback. So you have a 15 and a 17. They're far enough away. They're not going to get hit immediately. You will most likely have time to move them before they, you know, if you're, you're not going to probably get hit right away. They're not too close, and yet they're not too far away. Close, and yet they're not too far away. Close, and yet I think that's going to be a mini magnet if this closes down. Oh, you're in a there's trade? No, there's no other way I would have been filled. magnet will paint there. Now, since price moved up uh, past it, it's not 
it can't be a main man. Um, Chris wants to know what good hiding places, major levels, what good hiding places are, major levels, and stuff. What good hiding places are, major levels? What are what good hiding good places? places? Oh, for your stuff. Um, yes, so, oh, <laughs> when you're trailing, you can use ice uh, nodes, um, the histogram right here. Uh, Besides that, I use, sometimes I'll use um, OP. I'll trade, uh, I'll trail three ticks behind momentum stars. Um, depends on the situation I'm in. You can use ice levels, you can use deviation levels, you can use magnets, you can use expected range boxes. There's a lot of different ways to do it, uh, depending on how tight you want your stop. So when you're in a trade, First thing I look for is where's that next level? What's the next level? Okay, in this case, my entry was very, very close to the high of yesterday. So my next level where price might struggle is going to be in between these little uh, low volume notes. So I'm seeing how price reacts. So once it breaks past that, here's another here's another hole in the chart, right? And then right after that, you have ice high. So as, as the trade develops, you can um, hide your stop behind behind those. I like to hide them behind, um, let's say price is uh, going down, right? And let's say it's out right here. I'm going to hide it behind this, this hole right here. Because if price does push it to here, I expect it to stop and and go the other way unless it has enough you know contracts to push it through. So there's a lot of different ways to trail your stop. Does that answer your question? Hardest part for me too, Dennis. So if you have, um, this is just a side note, if you have current price on your chart, it's really cool because you can see how price reacts to the nodes as, it, as they get there. Now, your power play was at the top. So here you have, if this closes down, it'll be a sling. And there's room for your 10 ticks down to ice high. Um, but since I'm already in a trade, um, this is my last trade. <laughs> it is. 
but no matter what happens from this trade on, you know, you're you're good. You took two good trades, and your last trade is, you know, one. Um, it's already a break even plus one, so just follow it. Follow it like you would the first trade. Crazy slow. So you did get your ten ticks and it pulled it to break even. Plus one, correct. Right. I don't count the plus one ever in my li in my tick counts because it's got to pay for the trade anyway. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Just call it good. Mhm. Mm And that's it. Um, oh, you got knocked out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I got knocked out. Four hundred. I didn't see, didn't see price go up there, but yeah, I, I got knocked out. Okay. Well, cool. Well, yeah. You're up to four hundred and something dollars. How cool is that? Cool <laughs> stuff. Yep. Uh, Matt asks about the power play charts in the room. Is it expected that a person could actually trade from them alone? Um. <laughs> I guess, yeah, you really could. You don't have the IR charts, which I have to have for IR consultation. But it does have clusters and it does have stars on those charts. So technically you could. I can't hear you, Lori. Craig, I think you got something close to the microphone. Not me. <laughs> okay. Well, um, are you guys ready to call it a day? We got it. We've had a good morning. We've shown how to do several of these, and um, I mean, do you want to keep going, or do you want to spend an hour and forty sure, minutes you to you guys? An hour. Uh, the ice. Chris asks about learning the ice histogram. There is um, a forum post on ice skating, which talks about trading between the nodes. And there is some information on the ice uh, indicator, I believe, about it. You always want to keep going. <laughs> Um, Ivar, Ivar, what's going on with you? What do you, you want to keep going? You want to stop? What's going on? Um, it's it's up to them. For for this day, we're we're finished. Three trades, eighty-five ticks. Call it good. Yeah, that was yeah. really really nice. I mean, we can keep going for the sake of learning power plays, but it's it's up to you. Your head's saturated. That's kind of how I feel. I'm, I'm exhausted myself. Yeah. Um, well, it is going to be a THT, and I don't want it to be too long so people can, you know, go through it and digest the, right. the information right. presented in the THT. So I think we should, uh, right. we should cut it. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. let's do that then. Let's stop. We'll do this several times. This will not be the last time. And... Um, so, you got, a, you got an idea of, of how it works. 
Now, your job, everybody in this that's watching this webinar, either live or recorded, when it gets up, I want questions. I want to know what we need to clarify. What is not clear? So your job is to bring us the questions and tell us what we need to clarify. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording and I'm gonna hang it up. Cool. If I can find my bandit cam. There it is. <laughs>